We are here at Jampaling Tibetan Buddhist Centre in West Cavan. It sits on a piece of land that extends 16 acres and is home to a variety of ecosystems. An ecosystem is how living communities of plants, animals and insects interact with the non-living elements in the environment. There are ponds and lakes, a woodland, a meadow and a variety of minor ecosystems including the walled garden. Living communities rely on their environment for food, water and resources. The health of any ecosystem can be measured by the variety and level of diversity within that community. So how do we grow vegetables and flowers without resorting to the use of harmful chemicals and slug bait, which often contribute to the demise of the biodiversity we are trying to encourage and derive benefit from? Our answer is by practicing proactive gardening with nature. The techniques of organic gardening, biodynamics, companion planting, permaculture and Buddhism are very much part of the ethos. All our food comes from the soil, therefore in turn we feed and stimulate the soil to keep it healthy. We create habitats and grow flowers that will attract welcome predators. This is done in order to build up their populations in the garden. When the number of mollusks slows and snails, far outweigh the number of birds able to feed off them, nature requires our help. The gardeners form part of the community that assists the ecosystem to function well. It is essential to have an awareness of the needs of all the living beings in the garden, from the smallest bacteria to larger birds. A multi-storied, symbiotic relationship occurs in this kind of gardening style. Open-faced flowers like calendula attract hoverflies whose larvae feed on aphids. In some cases, the gardeners themselves become the pollinators. This mostly happens with squash plants growing under cover, but in some years, tomato plants also need to be hand-pollinated. Plants sometimes become hosts for pests, who in turn become food for others along the food chain. DOC is well known as first aid treatment for nettle stains, and it hosts the larvae of the beautiful DOC beetle, Gastrophysia viridula. We allow weeds to flourish in certain areas. Plants such as nettle, where certain butterflies lay their eggs, are also a nutritious food for humans.
Kitchen waste and garden waste are recycled using a variety of composting techniques. These upcycled compost bins are set in soil above a hole of about 12 inches. This increases the area for waste recycling and the rich liquid runoff can go to feed surrounding plants and soil. A long stick is used to aerate and add oxygen to penetrate the layers of kitchen scraps and weeds. A handful of soil is added now and again for microbial inoculation. Vegetables are frequently allowed to express their full life cycle, from leaf to flower, flower to seed. While the process can take over a year to complete, bees feast on the pollen and nectar. Here we can see kale plants, but leeks, garlic and any plant can be allowed to go to seed depending on the variety. I hope this has been helpful to you and assists you to do a little less in your garden so your garden helpers can do more for you. Instead of mowing and weeding, you can sit back, drink a cup of tea and watch the bees.